China's does this to stop delisting. In order to stop the delisting of 260 Chinese companies from the Nasdaq, China is working on a three-group plan that will separate each Chinese company into categories. The three groups would consist of firms with non-sensitive, sensitive, and secretive data. Companies with secretive data would be forced to delist due to the risk of high-stakes information being leaked to the United States and other countries. Companies with sensitive data would have to restructure their operations to become compliant, but would be exempt from delisting. Finally, companies with low-risk non-sensitive data, like NEO, would be allowed to operate as normal, while being exempt from delisting. In 2020, the US Congress stated, it's time to audit firms from all jurisdictions of the world. All firms, whether local or foreign, must comply fully with our rules and standards. If they don't cooperate, then they will be forced to delist from the US stock market. Chinese and US auditors are continuing to work together to ensure that the companies accessing US capital markets are put there by merit and not by deception. This May, International Affairs Director Y.J. Fisher stated, there have been ongoing and constructive discussions between US and Chinese authorities. I believe issues between the two countries should be resolved because both sides have a lot to lose. The US says, electric cars are the next thing. In a recent interview with Yahoo Finance, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg explained why the US government should focus on the electric vehicle infrastructure. On Friday, President Joe Biden declined to declare that the US is under a climate emergency. However, his administration faces intense pressure to combat climate change, and electric cars will play a key role in that goal. Buttigieg says the White House has created a $7 billion plan to bring 500,000 new EV charging stations across the United States. According to Buttigieg, electric vehicles are important because they will allow the US to fix current climate change issues. Here is a short clip of Buttigieg's Yahoo interview. Yeah, let's talk about EVs because you're overseeing the effort to have 500,000 public EV charging stations around the country by 2030. Uh, how's that going from the government side and also with a public-private partnership? Are you confident that the overall EV sector is on pace to shoulder the load as more and more people switch over from internal combustion engines? We're hard to work on this, and uh, we, we are confident that America is up to the task, but it's going to take a lot. Uh, and we're talking about uh, uh, major changes in, uh, in the infrastructure required to support vehicles. And, uh, you know, the, the infrastructure that uh, came about over decades for gas vehicles uh, is we just don't have time to, to do it at, at that organic pace, which is why we're making the investments that we're making right now to get to the president's goal of half a million chargers by the end of this decade. As you mentioned, it's a public-private partnership. We're not envisioning uh, m most or even many of these being government-owned and operated chargers. But we do see a lot of areas where it's not yet profitable uh, to uh, uh, to have a, a charger put in by the private sector penciling out, uh, or we need to uh, uh, make sure that we buy down the difference to uh, support a nationwide network so that you're uh, always confident when you go on a road trip that you can get a charge when you need it. Uh, we are within days of the deadline for states to deliver their plans state by state for how they're going to use the first year's worth of formula funding. We got a billion dollars headed their way. And I'm really interested to see what the states are going to come up with, because in all humility, even though we've got a lot of expertise, we've teamed up with the Department of Energy uh, for a lot of best practices. We're setting the standards for EV chargers. When you think, Mr. Secretary, new car sales for EVs is going to exceed that of gas engines. And is this something the government should be in the business of encouraging? We think it is something we need to encourage uh, for three reasons. Look, uh, the, we, we think the market is going EV no matter what. That's where the, the, the world is headed and that's where the automotive industry is headed. And as you noted, uh, that's true for the Detroit legacy automakers, just as it's true for, for startups, the, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the Teslas and, and, and Rivians and other uh, firms that have been uh, uh, in so many ways leading the way toward EVs. Uh, so it's very interesting to see you know, uh, relatively new companies that specialize in this and some of the most storied names in, uh, uh, in in U.S. Autom automotive uh, sector, the, uh, the big three out of Detroit, all moving in this direction. That's what's been happening this week in the world of NEO stock analysis and predictions. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click the subscribe button at the bottom right and subscribe to Financial Health right now, so that next week you'll get the inside scoop on the latest developments to keep you and your business on the leading edge of NEO stocks and predictions.
If you enjoyed this edition of NEO Stock Analysis and Predictions, leave a comment and please hit the like or share button, we'd really appreciate it. Are you still watching and want more? Check out last week's NEO Stock Analysis and Predictions by checking out our NEO playlist.